You're such a good God. You're such a loving God. Oh, we we'll rejoice in your holy name. Oh, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Oh, God. That name, that holy name, that holy name that is above every name. Every name will bow. Every tongue confess. That name. Oh, thank you, Father. Father, we thank you. There's healing. There's salvation in the name. There's your supply is in the name, the name that is above every name. Well, thank you, Father, for the name. That Jesus earned such a name. You bestowed that name with power. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the name, the name that's above every name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you. Oh, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence tonight. We thank you. We thank you for the privilege of being able to worship you and lift our voices, worship you with the fruits of our lips. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, that salvation is ours. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Healing is ours. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Lord, everything we say tonight is to glorify you. None of us, this Father God, that through the word of God is, is ours that, it, that we might take pride. But Father God, it's all in you. It's all in the name of Jesus. It's all in the power of that holy name. We praise you and honor you, and we give you great glory, exalt you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, we welcome everybody tonight. For those of you that are in here with us, we're glad to have you with us. It's not the same ministering to Empty seats. Empty seats don't praise God. Empty seats don't worship. Empty seats don't tithe. Empty seats don't. They're just empty seats. But when we have people in here and, you know, and people come in and they join with us and we join together, oh, to just to not know that <clears throat> that great corporate feeling of precious like faith, knowing you're standing in the midst of people that believe the way you believe. They don't think you're crazy. <laughs> because so many people do, they just they think you're we're just absolutely crazy because our confidence in that name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Well we've been <coughs> teaching for uh, several Wednesday nights now, I don't know how many, uh, we've been discussing, looking at uh, healing in the Word of God. I, I can't say that I always believed in healing through the Word of God. There was a time that uh, uh, Judy and I, we were amongst denominational folks that we, we would have a Wednesday night service like this and uh, <clears throat> a uh, the, the minister would get up, and he would ask, usually ask one of the deacons to stand up and pray for the sick that were in the group. And they would, uh, he would stand up, and somebody would have handed him a list, and he would call out, you know, brother so-and-so who's in the hospital, sister so-and-so who's in a nursing home. And he'd go down the whole list, a whole long list of people uh, <clears throat> that were that were in need of healing, in need of God's touch in their lives. And he'd always finish up something to this effect. And, Lord, if it be thy will, heal them. And when I 
began to study and began to see healing in the Word that really was in the Word, you know, I always had the temptation to finish that for him. I said, Lord, heal them, but if it ain't, just go ahead and kill them. Because that's the way it's leaving it. It's leaving it like, well, it's, if, if it's God's will. And you don't find God's will by circumstances. I've had people tell something to the effect of, well, uh, <clears throat> I don't believe there's healing in the atonement because my ain't so-and-so, uh, she was the best Christian you ever seen. And uh, she taught Sunday school for years and years and years. It was always faithful to the church, always gave her tithe, and she died of excruciating pain and cancer. It's not what someone else physically experienced that tells us the will of God. It's the Word of God, and that's what I hope you begin to catch on to as we go through this. It's always the Word. It's always the Word. It's, there's never, any, I don't care if it's me. I don't care if it's you. I don't care if it's somebody you know, or somebody else in the ministry, or some great person in ministry. You know, it comes through the Word. You have to, what does God's Word have to say about it? And the more I study, the more I am firmly convinced that healing is in the atonement. It's there for us. But we get into a situation, we looked at last week, God wouldn't let Moses go into the promised land. And when, he wouldn't, when Moses couldn't go, and uh, I'm sure Moses was kind of grumbling to God about it, and uh, Moses was kind of a favorite child, uh, I know parents say they don't have a favorite child, but uh, I, I think Moses is kind of a favorite child uh, of God. And, and in his grumbling, God said, all right, Moses, I'm going to take you up on this high mountain, and I'm going to let you see what I have given to the children of Israel. Past tense. He said, I've given it to them. I've done it. I'm going to take you up on that mountain. I'm going to show it to you. You know, that's not the only time that's ever happened. Satan actually took Jesus up and told him, said, I'm going to show you all the kingdoms. I'll show you all the kingdoms of the world and, and, and the riches thereof. And said, if you'll just fall down and worship me, I'll give these things to you. And that's when Jesus didn't fall to the temptation. Thing we we're very thankful for. But Moses goes up on the mountain and God shows him the whole promised land. He said, this is it. And he said, I have already give it, given it to the children of Israel. I have, I have set the boundaries for it. Yeah, the children of Israel never fulfilled all the boundaries. They fell short. Was it God's will for them to fall short? If God said, I've given you to, over to this point, I'm giving you over to this point, I'm giving you over to this point, I'm giving, was it God's will for them to take half of it? We find there, there was... Uh, <clears throat> actual tribes uh, of Israel, that after they went in, there was years later, they still had not taken their possession. But they wanted God to just give it to them. They were coming from the perspective, if it be God's will, we'll have it. If it ain't God's will, we won't have it. So it's just all up to God. Judah came in and said, uh, we don't have enough. We've taken everything that God gave us. We've taken everything that was allotted to us, and it's not enough. We want more. God didn't get mad at him. He didn't get irritated at him. He said, you're being selfish. He said, we're a strong people, and we're, we're wanting more. Joshua looked at him and said, you are strong people. He said, if you want more, go take it. Go take it. If you're not having enough as a Christian, if you're not fulfilled to where, to where you don't feel like the, that your Christianity is real, it's not God's fault because God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. 
everything that pertains to life and godliness. But just as the children of Israel, <coughs> they, were, they were walking in the wilderness with an entire generation dying, and finally, 40 years later, which that is designated as a generation, 40 years later, God says, okay, Joshua, it's time for y'all to quit playing on the sand. We're going to go into the promised land. We're going to take it. He said, I've given it to you, but you've got to go take it. God put healing in the atonement. It's there. But it's not going to come just simply because it would be nice. It's not going to come simply because somebody out yonder got saved or, or, and, and, got, and, and got healed or, or whatever. It's going to come because you see it in the Word of God and you're willing to fight for it. You're willing to put your foot down and say, no, this has been given to me. It's mine. It's part of my inheritance. I have inherited this through the death and burial resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my eldest brother. I'm walking in the blessings of God. I set my feet. God actually told the children of Israel, he says, now you're going to cross that river. He says, you're going to cross that river. He says, any place your foot treads, I give it to you. I give it to you. So many Christians, their foot has never tread in the area of divine health. Not just healing, but walking in divine health. Their foot has never tread there. And when they hear somebody, when we first heard it taught, we thought they were crazy. We thought they were insane. We've been in church all our life. And all of a sudden, somebody come on, tell us about this divine healing stuff. We thought they were insane. Well, they don't know about more about God than we do. And we think they're crazy. But we had to study so to, to find out in God's Word what was actually there. And we begin to hit scriptures like, I am the Lord that healeth thee. We begin to hit scriptures like, I'll bless your bread and your water, and I'll take sickness and disease away from the midst of you. Hit scriptures like, he sent his word, and he healed them of their diseases. We hit scriptures like, by his stripes, we are healed. And to make it affirmed, the Holy Spirit brought it over into the New Testament through Peter, and said, by his stripes, we were healed. He said, Peter said, we're looking forward to the finished works of the Lord Jesus Christ. He hadn't come yet, but by his stripes we're healed. Just as, the, as, as, as Moses could stand on that mountain and look at the promised land, and God could say, Moses, I've already given it to him. All of that, I've given it to him. And it had to be supernatural for him to be able to see it. Just like it had to be supernatural for Satan to show Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. It was supernatural for Moses to stand on that mountain and look at that entire inheritance. He says, I've already given it to them. I've already given it to them. That, that, that's my will. My will is that they go and they take it all, but they never did. Did God fall short? The people of God fell short. They fell short in their confidence. They fell short in their faith in that name. They fell short in, that, that, in the belief that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to that name, that name. So 40 years later, God tells them, is, tell, is, is telling Joshua, take them across and go fight for it. Go fight for it. You've got to fight for it. You've got to stand up and demand what's rightfully yours <clears throat> through the finished works of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to go tonight, I want to look at some things. First Peter 1, 23 through 25. Peter's talking to the body of Christ, and he said, being born again, do you realize there's, there's nothing that would take more power than for a person who was, who was lost in sin to be born again and all of their past washed away to the point that it didn't matter anymore, and now they were standing in newness of life. They've been born again. That, that, that is 
resurrection power. That is resurrection power. That is the greatest power on the face of the earth. And Peter says, Peter the God speaking through Peter, says, is talking to Christians. He's being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Nothing can derail, redirect, or misdirect the ability of God working in our lives what he has done through the new birth. It's out there for us to go take. The seed is then in us to be developed. It is not something that just lays dormant, but it is something that does have to be developed. Being born again of corruptible, of not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. How are you born again? By the word of God. We keep going back to the word. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. What lives and abides forever? The word. The word of God lives and abides forever. For all flesh is grass, and all glory of man is the flower of grass. As the flower, the, the grass withereth, the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which is by the, God, which by the gospel is preached unto you. So what we're delivered by, the word of God. We're talking about being born-again people. It's much more difficult to spiritually be born again than it is to be healed of a physical malady. But God stretched forth his arm. He just stretched out his arm. One place it talks about and, and, and God with his finger, with his finger, the mighty ability of God working in our behalf for me and for you. Mark chapter 4, one verse 30. Now, I'm going to use some scriptures you've heard taught before. You've heard me teach them. You've heard other people teach them. But I want you to think on them in the concept of we've been talking about healing being in the atonement, okay? I want you to think about them in that context. And remember, faith doesn't come from having heard. Faith comes from hearing. When you have heard, you dismiss the word. So I've heard that before. I actually had a man come into my office many years ago, and he sat down and he said, uh, he, he said I wish you'd get off and start preaching something else. And I said, do what? He said, yes. Yeah. He said, I want you to get off and start preaching something else. He said, I heard what you're preaching years ago. And I wanted to tell him, how aren't you living at them? But, you know, being, being a pastor, not wanting to run somebody off, you know, I, I didn't, and, and very ironical, just a short time after that, the guy divorced and uh, found his true soulmate, left his wife and children, you know, why, because he was not hearing the word. God could have corrected him if he was hearing the word, but he had heard the word, and no faith comes. Uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 3. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. Uh, the, uh, the Passion Bible says uh, there, there went out a farmer to throw seed, to cast seed. And, and that, that's what's taking place here. It, it, this is a type. A farmer is actually the type of you and I. And th there's going to be a, uh, I think you might could call this a double entendre in here because we're the sower. As, as we read this story, we are the sower. But as we continue to read the story, we, we, it turns and, and we're, we're not the sower, we're the, we're the ground. Would that be a double entendre when it, when it you're, you're, looking at, you're looking at a situation where it looks obvious the sower sows the word and the ground, and people are just the ground, you know, People and, you're, and everybody can be different kinds of ground. But not only are we the ground, we're also the sower. Okay. 
Hearken to the sower went out to sow, verse 4, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and all the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up and it was scorched, and because it had, had no root, Pastor, how are you going to say root? Uh, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other, that's what we want to be, other, okay? I remember there was a show on TV years ago, and there was a, what was it? There was one guy, and then he had two brothers, and both of them, his name was Daryl, and he said, this is Daryl, and this is my other brother, Daryl. And, and they opened up a restaurant, and they asked him, the guy come, come in and ordered eggs, and he said, uh, he said, well, what kind of eggs do you want? I said, well, what have you got? He said, well, we've got chicken and we've got other, you know. You know. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I don't know if you want other eggs or not, but you definitely want to be one of the others here. You, this is where you want to be other, okay. And some fell among thorns, well, <clears throat> and in, in the verse 8, and others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 full. Now, again, think about this in the, in the sense of healing in the atonement, okay? And he said unto them, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Is anybody reading the, the, the uh, uh, Passion Bible? Or my tablet it keeps cutting off on me I, I wanted to read what how the how, how the passion bible actually just read it read that verse verse it, it, verse nine I, I want you to read verse nine he that have ears here let If you understand this, then you need to respond. I love that. I love that. Now, King James says, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. But the Passion Bible said, now, if you hear this and you understand it, you need to respond. Now, you're talking about getting a 30, 60, 100-fold return. Now, that's like somebody come up to you and some... I know of another story where uh, th this man, this man, his wife was, didn't have a lot of money and stuff. They'd been farmers, but uh, their uh, uh, postman told him, said he, he talked to him every day. Said you need to start investing some money. You need to put some money away for for later on when you can't work. And so they said, well, so we've been thinking about doing some stock. He said, do you know, uh, you know of any companies that we ought to invest in? He said, well, you know, I have heard. Of a new company, this is a postman who talked just encouraging these people. I've heard of a new new company that's just starting up, so they're not even fully established yet. But it's got real good promise. And he said, "I'm putting a little bit of money in it." And said, uh, "If you'd like to put some in it," said, "said I think it would be a good thing to do." And uh, so they did, and they they forgot about it. And so years later, they were both real old, and they're getting, getting to the uh, and and the postman was still friends with them, and they were having some financial problems. And uh, the postman says, what about the, the money you invested? He said, D did, uh, did that ever come through? You're not. And they both looked at each other. We forgot all about that. We forgot that we did that. And so they got to looking and searching for it. And you know what they found? They found IBM stock before it went public. Can you imagine what that would have been worth years later, pre-public IBM stock. Yeah. <clears throat> so he, he said, if, if you've heard this and you understand it, and you understand it, you need to take appropriate action, basically. You need to take, so if you're going to get 30, 60, 100 fold return, what is the appropriate action? Well, what are you investing into? Well, what we're talking about now, there's many areas we could be talking about, but what we're talking about right now is talking about investing into our health. Investing in to, if, we, if, we're, if we're already healed, 
If we're, not, if we're not having symptoms of stuff, we're invested in staying that way. If we're, if we're having symptoms of stuff on our body, we want to address them symptoms, and we, we want them healed. Amen? We want them healed. And Judy and I was talking about this not too long. I, I talked with Dad Hagen many years ago, and they have, they have healing school on the Rama campus every, every day, Monday through Friday, five days a week, twice a day. In the morning, only terminally ill people could come into it and their, then their number one caregiver. That's all that could come in. In the evening, it was open to anybody that wanted to come. But the morning was just terminally ill patients. And he said, he said, you know, he said, we've seen some mighty works of God. He said, we've seen some wonderful things that God has done. But he said, what's sad, most of them wait too late. And he said, all we can do is get them ready to die. And he said, that's not all bad. I mean, you know, at least, at least we can do that. We, heaven's waiting on them, you know, and, and, and so we can get them ready to, to make heaven their home. But he said, it's, they come too late. And we've known people through 35 years of, of pastoring that they would come in and they would get the word on healing and they would hear that we believed on that. And I've had people that actually sent word. Well, I know that Pastor Frank and Pastor Jude believe in healing. Get them to pray for me. It's too late. If they had been concerned, they would have been in a church that believed that way. They, they, they would have been getting their, their, their it's, like, it's like, you know, I know I can go to a gym and work out, and I can get real buff. But they wait till, till they can't get out of, uh, out of the rocker, they can't get out of, out of the recliner, and then they want to run in the gym one time and work out. I, I, I actually, years ago, I actually did that. Uh, there, there was a uh, a friend that worked out all the time, and uh, he was a traveling minister, and we'd had him in the church. And he asked me, he said, I'd, he said, I'd love to work out. He said, would you go with me to work out this morning? I said, sure, I'll, I'll go with you. And I was athletic, man. I, I was back in my younger days. I, I said, I was athletic. I said, I, and this, but this guy worked out all the time. And like an idiot, <clears throat> I tried to do what he did. The next day, my joints were burning. Judy could, in, in, in the bed could reach over and touch my elbow, and I'd jump slap out of bed. You know, well, I tried to do, just I couldn't do that at that point. The same thing happens spiritually. The, the doctor will tell somebody, so well, you are terminal. You're going to die. And you've only got a matter of weeks. You've got some kind of disease that we can't do anything for. And so then they come running back into church. And usually they'll come in and they bring their family with them. And then they die anyway. Why? Because they waited too late. And then because they waited too late, the family leaves because they're mad because God didn't heal them. I can tell you personally, from personal experience, it doesn't pay to get mad at God. It doesn't pay. It'll come back to haunt you. I had a, a very close friend of mine who pastors the church. He called me the other day, and he was talking about some things that had gone on, some things that had happened, and to the point that even his daughter had caught, had caught uh, coronavirus. And he said, Frank said, I made a mistake. Said, I got mad at God. And he said, you know, when I come to my senses, it didn't take me but just a few seconds to get it straightened out and to repent and say, God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I, I should have never done that to start with. So we are the sower and as we go through the, and we're also the ground, okay? Many years ago when I got healed of <coughs> migraine headaches, I had I was going th we were going through the process of really learning about divine healing. And it had just been revealed to me that believers would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. And I had come through a period of going through O-line Pentecostal people that you need to go find somebody that was anointed with healing, that there were certain people that were anointed. And there are people that have a stronger anointing for healing than others do. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? That, that, that is out there. There's people that they just have an anointing in that area. And so, <clears throat> but... But faith, healing by faith, is available to anybody in the body of Christ. And so I, I had just gotten a hold of this thing where 
I, believers lay hands on the sick and they, they would recover. I didn't have to, you know, and, and I'd come to the point that Judy and I would pray for each other, and we'd, we'd done come through that level. And then I'd come into, if Judy wasn't there, I didn't have to go find her. All I got to do is agree with the word. That gives me my agreement. I can lay hands on myself. I say, Lord, just as your word says, I'm a believer, and I'm laying hands on myself. And I thank you, Father, for healing. That's all it takes. That's all, that's all it takes. We can actually pray for ourselves. And uh, I'll go into the rest of that story some other time. But it, it, it is really a great story of watching the Word of God work. So <clears throat> let's go down to Mark 4, 26. <clears throat> You're the sower, and at the same time, you are the soul. So if, and the reason I told you that story is that if I can lay hands on myself, I'm realizing that I am the sower and I am the soul. So it doesn't matter where the spoken word comes from. It can come out of my mouth for me, and it's still just as powerful as if it was somebody else speaking the word of God laying hands on me. See, so through this story, I'm the sower, you're the sower, and we're the soul. We're the ground. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. Now, what did Jesus, when Jesus was on this earth, he went about doing three things. What was it? What? Teaching, preaching, healing. That's what Jesus did on this earth. Teaching, preaching, healing. What did he, what did he teach on? What was he teaching? What did the word say that Constance said he was teaching on? He was teaching on the kingdom of God. We knew how to live physical. We knew how to live in the flesh. We knew that you could, you could go to a good school and learn and, and that you could become, develop and be a good business person. We knew that. We knew that you ought to invest. We knew that you ought to save money. We ought to know that you ought to increase. We knew that. But he said from a spiritual standpoint, you don't know how to walk in the kingdom of God. And he said, I'm going to teach you how to walk in the kingdom of God if you'll listen to me. If you've got ears to hear, if you're teachable, I'll teach you how to walk in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> but he said, so is the kingdom of God. What's he teaching on? The kingdom of God. He said, this is the way the kingdom of God is. This is what the kingdom of God is like. As if a man cast seed into the ground. Or we say, as a woman cast seed into the ground. My, how old is our, my youngest granddaughter now? Three years old? Four years old. She just turned four years old. She told her daddy the other day she was a woman. She said, I'm a woman, daddy. <clears throat> so this applies to women too, okay? <clears throat> so, he said, so is the kingdom of God if a man or a woman or a woman should cast seed into the ground. What is the seed? The Word. So the kingdom of God, as if a man, is comparable to a farmer going. I, I remember watching my dad when I was young. And uh, every, every fall, he would, he would sow uh, turnip greens. And we would, eat, we would eat turnip greens all one where he's on. But he would go out and have an area plowed up, and he would just take them in his hand, and he would cast them like this, and he would, they would spread, and he'd cast them. And, and, and he was so developed at it because he grew up that way. They grew up poor, and they couldn't afford a machine to do it, so they had to do it by hand. And, and so he, he would end up, he would have a great big area. They would sow just totally neat and evenly spread. And it's amazing to me that he could do that. And, uh, and so, but that's what's taking place here. He said, it's, as the same as physically casting seed into the ground, he said, you cast God's word. You cast God's word into good ground. Now, we determine whether or not we're good ground or not. He said, but as you cast it, as you're throwing it out, just his dad would always do it, and some, he'd get over close to the side, and some of those seeds would get over in the weeds and stuff. But most of it stayed out, out there. Where it needed to be. He said, hey. He 
said, and he said, so is the kingdom of God, as a man should cast seed into the ground, and he should sleep and rise night and day. The seed should spring up and grow. He knoweth not how. You don't have to know how it works. He said, how can speaking words heal me? You don't have to know that. You don't have to know how speaking God's word takes control over your health and you become and you can be healthy. All you've got to do is do it. Just do it. Just start, suppose, sow spiritual words. You just you so you go through if it's healing that, that you're needing. And and this works for any area in, in human life. Is is we we just we're just we're just sowing. We're just well, okay. I need I come I, I, I won't. I want to stay healed. So what do I do? I regularly go over the Word of God. That Hagen was actually raised from the bed of uh, the, from the deathbed. They t the doctors told him he, you can't live. He, he said you you were born premature and your internal organs weren't fully developed. You can't live. Well, they were right. He died at eighty six years old. You know, and it, it finally killed him. But but he got a hope to the Word of God. He got a hope to that Word. And, and he began to, to walk in that word. He began to cast that word and to cast that word and to cast that word until finally he came off the sick bed. He came off the death bed uh, because it, he was doing what God had instructed and, and he had to get it all, not because somebody taught him. He had to get it through the word. He had to just sit and he, he always, he'd be talking about it. And he said, well, I got it through reading my grandmother's old Methodist Bible. Well, what it was, Urban Methodist Bible was a King James Version of the Bible. I mean, that's what it was. But he found it in God's Word, and he said he couldn't find anybody else that would agree with him. He said, so I just agreed with the Word. He said, so the kingdom of God is if a man should cast seed into the ground, and the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. The earth set up to do that. The kingdom of God is set up to bring forth healing. The kingdom of God is set up to bring forth healing. I want to uh, see if I can get. I might have to get Lily to set up here and just keep my my tablet open for me. Uh, go, go to Mark eleven, scripture you're very familiar with. And go down to let's go. Let's just start at verse twenty-three. Okay, I'm in the amplified by version. Okay, he said, "I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, I, I, I assure you." And most solemnly say to you, this is Jesus speaking. If you've got a red letter verse, this is red letter. This is, this is Jesus saying. And Jesus didn't say anything in his life that wasn't true. He, he, he never said anything in his life that wasn't true. Whosoever, whosoever says to this mountain, all right, now we're, talk, we're talking about sickness. We're talking about sickness. So now, what is Jesus telling us to do when sickness attacks our body? Talk to it. Talk to it. He says, if sickness is telling you about it, talk to it. He doesn't say talk what the doctors say. I used to, I used to despise going over to, uh, to visit mother when other people would come in. When she, she lived over um, in, in a retirement area where older people had, uh, were all, all around her, and, and they all left their doors open, and they'd all, they would just walk in any time they got ready. It's good that my daddy died before they moved over there. He would have killed somebody. He couldn't, he, he couldn't stand that somebody just walk in your house like that. But they, they would just walk in at any time. And they were, and especially when they had been to the doctor. And they would come in and they would tell the whole, oh, well, I went to the doctor and they did this test and they did that test. And they test back when I had my operation 20 years ago. And, you know, and I used to have lupus or I used to have uh, have. have Heart disease, or I, you know, I, I, I have, or I have it. It's mine. You know, it belongs to me. Heart, it belongs to me. I've got it. And they would talk about the doctors. They'd talk about the nurses. They'd talk about the sickness. They'd talk about the disease. 
that's not what Jesus says we're supposed to say. He says, whatever that is, and it's a mountain in your life. If you want it to move, what do you do? You talk to it. Now, this is Jesus, people. This ain't me. I, I had a, a minister a while back. He, he, was just, he was getting all over my case. He said, you're one of that name and claim it bunch. And then they, they, they'll, they'll go on, and then they, they'll get a little more carried away with it, and they say, yeah, yeah you're, you're a blab it and grab it, all right. And I, you know, at first I'd like to say, well, what part? What part of the Scripture where Jesus tells us to do that was he lying? What part of it was he incorrect? Maybe he wasn't lying. Maybe he was just wrong. Maybe Jesus was just wrong. And you know what? you're not supposed to talk to your mountain. You know, the Pharisees, they tried constantly to tell him he was wrong. And he was so stubborn. He wouldn't listen to them. He was always putting them in their place. But yet he's the one that got him. His name got invested with power. He's the one that's names above every name. We don't even know who those Pharisees and Sadducees are unless they got mentioned in his Bible. He's the one that said it. He said, he said I've planted. Wait a minute now. Let me back up. I assure you. Verse 23, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever, would that be us? Would that include us anyway? Whoever says to this mountain of sickness and disease, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and he doesn't doubt in his heart in God's unlimited power, but believes that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him. It will be done for him in accordance with God's will. For this reason, I'm telling you what things wherever you ask in prayer. In accordance with God's will. Believe with confidence and trust that you've received, and you will be, and they will be given to you. All right, so now let's go back over to Mark chapter 4, 26. And he said, So is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground. When you when you speak the word of God over a situation, you're casting seed into the ground. Now, there is an enemy out there, and when you start trying to walk in faith, he's going to come do everything he can to destroy you. If he can get you off of the Word, he can if he can steal the Word from you, we know that if he comes for no other reason except for to steal, number one. So if he comes and he steals the Word from you, he can kill and he can destroy but as long as he can't get the word from you, he has no right. He has no right. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, as the man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day. We're in that period that Jesus said, if you speak to the mountain and believe in your heart, you shall have. What tense is shall? It's future. Future. I've had people ask me before, how long between the time I start speaking and the time I get a manifestation? How long does that take place? How long does it take for that to happen? That's simple. I, I can give you the exact amount of time that it takes. You start speaking, write down the date, you start speaking, and when it comes about, you'll know exactly how many days that it takes. Sometimes it takes longer than some things are more difficult than others. Some things are it, it, it's just Dad Hagen always said financial things are more difficult than healing. He said if you if you've got your head right, you got your heart right, you got your mouth right. He said healing's instant. He said, you don't wait on it, it's instant. He said, if you're, not, if you're praying for healing, you're not getting it. He said, you got something you need to change. But he said, now money, he said, is different. He says, money, God isn't going to float it down out of heaven. He said, it's got to come through somebody. Rob just got a new job. 
if somebody else had that job, and I don't know the situation there, but, but, but if somebody else had that job, you know, when did you graduate? A year ago? Hmm? Last December, so it's been, it's been less than a year. But, but, he, but if somebody else had that job that he thinks is the right one for him, if, if somebody else had that job, it would take, it was a period of time, God's not going to hurt that man. He's not going to hurt him. I, I hate to break your heart, Rob, but God does not love you any more than he did the man that had the position before you. So, so it took a time period from the time you started praying, if that is the right job, and I'm not saying it is, if that is the right job. See, it took time for God to move somebody else out of a job where this guy could be promoted and move over, to, you know, I said promoted, be promoted and move over to another job so that Rob could shift into this job if it's the right job. Now, <clears throat> see the process. So Jesus said, if I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I shall be saved. I can, I can stand on that. I can claim it. Uh, it belongs to me. I've been saved. I'm, I'm, I'm live, walking in redemption. Uh, but but it, in, uh, in Mark, uh, <clears throat> Mark, Mark 20, he said, I, he said, I say to you, that whosoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says is going to take place, what is going to take place. That's something they say in shell, isn't it? It's going to take place. So what's happening, what's happening in between the time that I got, I got my heart right, I got my mouth right, and, you know, I can actually have be a little messed up up here. We all know people's a little messed up here, don't we? But we, I, we can be a little messed up up here. We can actually have a little doubt and unbelief up here as long as it's not down here. Uh, so it, it, I, I got my head right. I got my mouth right. Uh, you know, I, I got my heart right. I'm, I'm starting to com I confess this thing, and I keep confessing. No matter what it looks like, I keep confessing. I keep confessing. I keep confessing. I keep, hold on. I'm going through that time period that Jesus said would be there is that I, 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 I begin to confess for the mountain to move, and, 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 I, and I've been believing, and so I'm waiting to that point I shall have. Shell have's coming. Shell, <clears throat> I've heard it put like this. There's always the payday. It's just not always Friday. People want Friday, payday to always be Friday. You know, and there's always is the payday. It's just not always Friday. So if, if, as long as you're confessing and you're keeping your heart right and you're, and you're saying the things you're supposed to do, you're not getting in doubt, you're not getting unbelief, you're not getting mad at God, you're going to have what you said. But it's just a matter of just bulldog tenacity. You're going to get a hold of something, and you're not going to let it go. You refuse to let it go. So <clears throat> the man has cast seed into the ground. He sleeps. He rises night and day. That 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 That's signifies time passing, doesn't it? Night and day. And the seed should spring up and grow. All of a sudden, he just walks out there one day, breaks through the ground. All of us people are farming. We love that. We love to plant those seeds. And walk in one day, they're just there. It amazes me. You know, <laughs> we grow okra. And it amazes me how quick that okra will replace itself after you cut it. It's just boom, man. It's just right there. So, he, so he's night and day, he, he goes out there. And finally, there, there it is. There it is. The seeds you spring forth and grow up, and he knoweth, he knoweth not how it did that. I added the did that, okay? That's not scripture. That's, 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 that's me putting my two cents in. All right. He goes out there and he looks at that. My Lord, Lucille, look at that. Have you ever seen such a thing? That thing just grown up. I don't, I don't know how it did that. Do you know how it did that, Lucille? I don't know how it did it either. You don't have to know how I did it. She said, all you've got to know is that it works. That's all you've got to know. It works. It works. But when the fruit is brought forth, 
immediately put it in the sickle. That's when you know whatever the date was. That's when you know it, it's got there. It's yours. You see it. It takes place. The problem is, it, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll close here, but the problem is, is we don't want to sow. We want to harvest. But if you ain't sown, there ain't no harvest. You can't say God's ever did anything in your life if you've not sown. Why? Because Jesus said that's the way the kingdom of God works. That's the way it works. Father, we thank you for the privilege of your word. We thank you, Father God, that you're so good to us. Lord, help us to grow in our understanding of the kingdom of God. Lord, that's what we want to teach is kingdom of God principles. We want to grow in kingdom of God principles. Lord, we want to see the power of God working, not just for our benefit, Father God, but so that we can minister to a dead and a dying world. And, Lord, we thank you there's all kind of uh, uh, people that are out there that are dead and dying. Not that we're not thanking that they're dead. That we're thanking, Father God, that we can help them. We've got what it takes, Father God. We can help them. And we just thank you for that privilege and that honor, Father God. We go forth. We thank you for the safety, Father God. Lord, we just want to take a second. We want to lift up our son who's, who he was in California. Now he's up in Oregon, and they're having some tremendous fires too. We lift up him, and, Father God, he's over a division of men, Lord, that he... We'll have the wisdom to keep them all safe, Lord. And at the time their finished time runs out there, they'll all be back home to their designated families, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. Giving you all the praise and the honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.